Southampton. What a sad fall from a bright future they have had. The Saints, ever since promotion into the Premier League back in 2012-13, have been steadily improving, even qualifying for European football. But the rise has suddenly dipped this season as Southampton now find themselves entrenched in the relegation battle, sitting five points from safety with five games remaining. The Saints have always had a soft spot in my footballing heart, so I see no other option than to save them and ultimately transform the club from the nation's south into the European juggernaut they were striving to become. Today, we rebuild Southampton. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. Welcome back to the FIFA 18 career mode rebuilding series. Today, we are back in the Premier League, saving one of the relegation battling sides. Today, we're rebuilding Southampton Football Club. But fellas, if you do go on to enjoy today's rebuild, make sure, as always, that you leave a like on the video and make sure that you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. For those of you who have not seen a rebuilding challenge video yet, here are the rules. So the main objective of this is to take a team to the Champions League final. We will be simulating every single game up until the Champions League final, which we will play ourselves. We can make whatever transfers we like, realistic, unrealistic, it does not matter. There's a big focus on the transfer window, only showing players that we sign. And finally, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. Let's get into the rebuild. So this is the starting 11 we're going to be rocking with for the first season. The first changes I want to be making is going to be in the goalkeeper and centre-back department. Want to get some players that can grow and provide an impact for the first season, but grow as the rebuild goes on. Not really sure how many seasons I'm expecting this rebuild to go for, but it's not a terrible Southampton side. It's a really It shocks me that they're in the relegation battle. I haven't watched too much Southampton football this season, but... Looking at the squad, it's not all that terrible, so very interested to see what we can do with it. A huge start to the rebuild here. A great goalkeeper signing. We splash the cash and sign Matea Perrin from Genoa. 33 million pounds, 84 rated goalkeeper. The Italian goalkeeper, what a signing. Welcome to Southampton, Matea Perrin. We splash the cash again and sign Andres Christensen, the Danish centre-back. He joins us here from Chelsea for 36.1 million pounds. We've spent a lot of money early on, but we've definitely already made massive improvements to this Southampton side. A player departure here, Jeremy Pied is going to the recently promoted in real life Wolverhampton Wolves. So he's off to Wolverhampton for 2.7 million pounds. Also, I think I called them the Wolverhampton Wolves. I'm pretty sure they're the Wolverhampton Wanderers, aren't they? Whatever, he's off to Wolves. And Fraser Forstar is now off to St. James's Park. The Englishman off to Newcastle United for eight million pounds. So a pretty busy opening window here. We've brought in Perrin and Christensen, sold Pied and Forster with a few other deals going on in the background. So we'll see if they go through during the simulation period. But anyways, let's check in and see how we're doing halfway through season number one. So here we are on the 1st of January in season number one, and we are well and truly entrenched in the relegation battle, sitting exactly where Southampton are in real life. We are in 18th position, which is quite disappointing, equal with Bournemouth on points. We have a bit of work to do in the second half of the season. Let's see if we can get anything done in the transfer window. Spurs, an eight-point lead at the top of the table ahead of uh, a four-team a four tie, really, between United City, Chelsea, and Leicester. So, very interesting stuff. Shane Long is going to depart us here in January, off to Newcastle, just like Fraser Forster, for £5.7 million. And on the same day, Stephen Davis, the Northern Irishman, off to Celtic for £2.7 million. A top signing here for our midfield as we have brought in Maximilian Meyer from Schalke. A pretty damn good deal. We got him for £8.3 million pounds plus Dusan Tadic. So Meyer will slot right into that center attacking midfield spot. So a pretty busy January transfer window. Maximilian Meyer into the club. Dusan Tadic, Shane Long and Stephen Davis all out. Will it be enough to save us from relegation? I certainly hope so, but... I'll see you guys at the end of hopefully a successful season one. Get in there. A much better second half of the season sees us survive the drop. 
we are going to be surviving. We finished in 14th position on 45 points, so 10 points clear of relegation. Must have been a much better second half to the season. Bournemouth, Newcastle and Brighton all go down. Spurs did hang on and win the Premier League title. City finished in second. United, Chelsea round up the top four. We didn't do any damage in the FA Cup, but I'm pretty happy to see this. My favourite English side, Fulham, managed to go on and win the FA Cup, which is an absolutely beautiful sight. We made it to the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup, where we lost on penalties to the eventual runners-up in Watford, who did lose 2-1 to Chelsea in the final. Spurs do the double. They win the Premier League, and they win the Champions League title, 1-0 over Manchester City. And another English side winning European silverware. Liverpool win the Europa League. So we did what was required in Season 1. We made some amazing amazing signings, building some foundations, but most importantly, remain in the Premier League. Will Southampton be able to do it in real life? Who knows? But let's see if we can go further in season number two with Southampton. A midfielder signing to kick off season number two with Southampton as Piotr Zielinski, the Polish Centre midfielder is joining us from Napoli for £31 million. Another solid signing here as Presnel Kempembe does sign for us. The French centre-back is joining us from PSG. £20 million plus Yoshida. A pretty decent signing if you ask me. So welcome to Southampton's rebuild, Presnel Kempembe. So that's the conclusion of the transfer window. We have brought in Zelensky and Kempembe, gotten rid of Yoshida, and currently in talks for Hoiberg to leave the club. But whether that goes through or not, I'm not 100% certain. But I'll see you guys halfway through season number two. 1st of January, halfway through the season, we are in a much better position than we were this time last season. Ninth place, only five points away from, or sorry, no, six points away from top four football. So definitely want to try making a push for that potentially but looking at the drop zone Derby County, Aston Villa and Norwich all battling relegation all three of the promoted teams and just like I predicted Hoiberg is making the move he has gone to Villarreal in La Liga for 17.8 million pounds a play departure here looking to upgrade our left back spot so we're going to sell on Ryan Bertrand to Atletico Madrid he is transferring there for 12.2 million pounds. And on deadline day, we bring ourselves in a brand new left back, absolutely splashing the cash. Lucas Hernandez says he plays center back, but we're gonna be playing him as a left back, arriving from Monterey for 33.2 million pounds. One player in, one player out. Hernandez in, Bertrand out. Pretty good transfer window. Our squad's looking good. Play is growing quite nicely. Let's see where we finish off in season number two. At the conclusion of our second season in charge of Southampton, we have narrowly missed out on Champions League football. Finishing on 64 points in sixth position. Man City and Liverpool two and three points ahead of us respectively. Tottenham back-to-back -to -back Premier League titles. And looking at the drop zone, Norwich had a shocker of a season. And Derby, County and Aston Villa joining them right back again in the championship. Bristol City went on to win the FA Cup on penalties against Wolves. FA, FA Cup in the past two seasons have been quite weird results. We made it to the round of 16 of the Carabao Cup where we were eliminated on penalties to the eventual champions in Manchester City. Bayern Munich did go ahead and win the Champions League final against Chelsea and AC Milan defeated Bayer Leverkusen in the Europa League. So that is season two done and dusted, slow and steady progress. Let's see if season three sees us qualify for Champions League football. I really do hope so. Get in there, fellas. We have brought him back. Sadio Mane, arguably one of Southampton's best ever youth, not really youth players, but one of their best ever players that have sold on and gone to achieve great things. We've brought him back from Liverpool. 22.4 million pounds plus Sofiane Buffal. That is a massive signing. Welcome back to Southampton, Sadio Mane. We've made ourselves a brand new signing. We're going to bring in a new right back, Fabrizio Bustos. The Argentinian coming here from Sevilla for 22.8 million pounds. A great upgrade on top of Cedric. So 
That's a great signing. Welcome to Southampton, Fabrizio Bustos. A pretty busy transfer window here. Mane and Bustos into the club, coming to St. Mary's. Buffal out of the club. Our starting 11's looking real good here. Hopefully we push for Champions League qualification whilst our players continue to grow. But I'll see you halfway through Season 3. Ninth position again. This is starting to become familiar territory for us. But the good thing is we're still pretty close to the top four. We're also pretty close to the relegation zone, which consists of Newcastle, West Ham and Burnley. So we definitely want to go up rather than down going to be an interesting second half of the season. We're going to go ahead and make our first pre-contract signing for the Southampton rebuild. Welcome in season number four, Timo Werner. What a pickup he will be. Timo Werner in next season. Nobody out of the club. We're going to deal with the squad we have right now. It is looking real nice. Let's see where season number three with Southampton concludes. No, sixth place again. That is so annoying. I wanted to play Champions League football next season, but we finished 10 points behind Manchester City. We weren't even close. Oh, damn it. Spurs win the league again. Preston, Burnley, and West Ham all relegated. Lol, West Ham. Chelsea did go on and win the FA Cup 1-0 over Man United. We made it to the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup where we lost to the eventual runners-up in Spurs. Man United clearly won that title. Spurs win yet another Champions League title. And we win the Europa League. Oh my, I was not expecting that. So we're going to be playing Champions League football after all. Get in there. We beat Mines in the round of 16, Zenit in the quarters, Hoffenheim, I believe that is, in the semifinals, and we obliterated St. Etienne in the final. Get in there. Yes, Europa League champions. So that's a great way to end season three. It was a disappointing season besides our Europa League results. Heading into season four, Timo Werner coming. We're playing Champions League football, baby. Season 4 begins with a big signing for our midfield. Someone I haven't really signed in rebuilds, but I saw him and I said, let's go ahead, let's bring him into the club. Jorginho is going to be signing from Napoli for 42.6 million pounds. And a player departure here. Now that we've brought in Jorginho, we may as well sell Mario Lamina. So he is off to the Serie A. He has signed for Inter Milan for 28.6 million pounds. And we continue to upgrade our side as Federico Chiesa, Chiesa is arriving from Fiorentina for 45.6 million pounds. A huge upgrade to our right wing position and our starting 11 is going to be looking absolutely mental right now. I mean, look at this team. This is a team and a half. We have replaced every single player from the initial starting 11 and built ourselves an incredible team so far. Excited to see what we can do this season and excited to see how more of these players continue to grow because none of these players are near their peaks at the moment. Maybe Mane, but the rest of them still have a lot of room to grow and our bench is still quite strong. We are looking really, really good here in season four. So a very full on transfer window, big, big business happening. Jorginho and Chiesa in, Lamina out. Our starting 11 looking quality. Let's go and see our first Champions League group. So I'm actually pretty happy with the group we've been drawn into. Yes, there is danger all around, but overall, no massive teams in world football. It is us, Hoffenheim, Shakhtar Donetsk, and Feyenoord. And I know we've beaten Hoffenheim last year in the Europa League. We have won the Europa League in season three, so maybe we can go the distance this year. I really don't know. Let's just focus on getting through the group. Let's find out those results in three, two, one. We have absolutely killed it. It is us and Hoffenheim through to the knockout rounds. We finished top of the group, five wins, one draw, no losses. That is what you wanna see. Switching to the tournament tree now, who are we gonna be versing? We are gonna be versing PSG, come on, man. Paris. Saint Germain in the round of 16 of the Champions League in season four. That's going to be a real test to see what we're made of. And here we are halfway through the Premier League season, not where we want to be. We are in seventh. We need to be getting top four every season from now on, but we're in the range. We're in 27 points. Spurs on 30 points. We can definitely make the top four if we have a good second half of the season. Chelsea have had an awesome season so far. Looking at the drop zone, Arsenal in big trouble. 
Bournemouth, Huddersfield and QPR are in the relegation battle. We have done absolutely nothing in this January transfer window. We didn't really have the funding to make a significant impact to the side. So this is going to be the side that we hopefully can go on a decent run in the Champions League with this season. Let's get into it. Let's get in the round of 16 against PSG. All right, the away leg first, traveling to the Parc de Prince. Full strength starting 11 out there. Let's see how we match up against, I'm assuming they'd have Neymar, maybe still Cavani, season four. They've got Schick, they've got Kingsley Coman, Verratti, of course, and Didi. They've got a very good side, and Rugani is going to give them the lead, but Sadio Mane is going to get us an away goal, which is brilliant to see. I'm all about them away goals. We're into the second half now. Come on, lads. Can we get another away goal? That would be huge if we had two away goals. Kondogbia picks up an injury. Just over 10 minutes to go. Come on. Is it? No, that's not what we were after. Schick makes it 2-1 in the 85th minute. Second leg time. 2-1 down here against PSG. Come on. Are we going to get eliminated in the round of 16? Or are we going to be able to pull it off and get through to the quarterfinals in season number four? We've got one away goal. So if we win this 1-0, we go through technically. But we need to score. And we're half an hour into it with no action. Don't tell me it's going to be one of those games. Timo Werner, 38th minute. We're 1-0 up. Two all on aggregate. We're headed through at the moment with away goals rule. But there's still 20 minutes to go. And it's starting to pick up. I'm getting nervous, lads. 10 minutes to go. Come on. Hold on. Zielinski, 2-0. We're going through. We pulled it off. Quarterfinals. Get in there. So another really big challenge in the quarterfinals. We have been drawn up against Barcelona. Another level above PSG. Can we get it done against them? This is really going to put us to the test. The away leg first. We're getting luck on our side. Traveling to the Camp Nou in Barcelona. Can we get the result here? We need away goals. That is all we are after. Look at their side. They've got Dembele in there. Koulibaly. Aguero, Kimpembe gets injured for us. Messi on the bench, which is a big call. Can we get an away goal? Christensen, the yellow card. Our defense is suffering today. Messi on for Suarez. Half an hour to go, still nil all. Bustos getting yellow carded. Half our back line might be suspended by the second leg. Timo Werner gets us an away goal, though. We're 1 0 up. Okay, we're 1-0 up against Barcelona with an away goal. Time for the second leg here at home. We've got the 1-0 result. Full strength starting 11. Come on, lads. If we got through to the semi-finals, I wasn't expecting it, especially playing Barcelona and PSG. But now, Chiesa makes it 2-0. Barcelona need two goals. Oh, my. Okay. Busquets, I didn't even notice that. Busquets got red carded. Coutinho equalizes, though. Don't tell me they're going to win this after having a man sent off. It's 2-1 in our favor. No, Aguero equalizes. Why does that always happen? Barcelona. No. That always happens, I swear. When you're simulating and a player from the opposition gets red carded, they always seem to win. We go out on away goals rule. 10 men Barcelona with an hour knock us out in the quarterfinals that is so disappointing so here we are at the end of season four and we have finished in fourth position which is what we were after narrowly missing out on third as well which would have been great to finish third there's a big difference between third and fourth because it's a whole nother level of qualifiers but we make the top four hopefully we get another chance at winning the champions league at least next season but Aston Villa, QPR, and Bournemouth all relegated in the Premier League. And Chelsea, other champions, one point ahead of United. Again, we're unable to make much of an impact in the FA Cup. Not even making the last 16. Man United beat Chelsea in the final. And again, eliminated in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup. Ultimately, though, Everton got their hands on that title. Also, since we won the Europa League last season, we made it to the final of the Copa Europe, or we made it to the Copa Europe, but we lost 1-0 to Spurs. Bayern Munich did go on to win the Champions League final, 1-0 over Atletico Madrid. And Manchester City won the Europa League, which actually might be bad for us. Crap, that is going to be bad for us, because they didn't make top four, did they? That means we probably won't be playing Champions League football next season, I don't think. Oh, God. So, Season 4 was quite exciting. Very nervous to see whether we'll be able to make Champions League football next season or not. But, 
Let's stop speculating. Let's get into Season 5 with the Saints. We have made a massive signing to kick off season number five. Now 90 rated, we have brought in the English superstar, Delhi Alley from Tottenham. 75 million pounds plus our backup left back, McQueen. It's been a massive signing, but what a way to start off this fifth season. Welcome to Southampton, Delhi Alley. So we are in the playoff rounds for the Champions League this season. We are taking on Shamrock Rovers for the hope of being in the Champions League in this fifth season. I mean, with the squad we have, I would expect us to be there, but just like normal qualifiers, I'm not going to watch it. Oh my God, we conceded. Let's simulate it. A 2-1 loss. Oh my, we've got a lot of work to do in this second leg. It's going to be quite embarrassing if we lose right now to Shamrock Rovers in the qualifying round. We're 2-1 down. We need a result here. We need to get the win. Come on. Of course, I'm going to simulate it. 3-0. Whew. Okay, that is a lot of pressure off. I was quite nervous, but Christensen, Chiesa, El Chiesa and Timo Werner all stepping up and getting us into the group stages. That was too close for comfort. This transfer window was all about quality over quantity. Delhi Alley in, McQueen out. Delhi Alley now turns us officially into a contender. Our squad looks awesome. The lowest rated player is 85 rated across the board, so that is a great sign. Let's go and check out our Champions League group for season number five. Once again, we're in Group B of the Champions League, but this season's group stages are 10 times more difficult than last year. Dortmund, Villarreal, and Basel. That definitely overshadows last group where we had Hoffenheim, Feyenoord, and whoever else was in it, but we are definitely up against it this year. A big challenge to get to the knockout rounds. Let's see how we go. Oh my god, we did better than last season. Undefeated in the group stages, Dortmund, one win, one draw, four losses. I thought Dortmund and us would be fighting for that top spot. Villarreal were going to be maybe a wild card in Basel. I didn't expect them to do anything, but it is us and Villarreal into the knockout stages. That is definitely a lot better than I expected. Looking at the knockout rounds, we have a simpler task compared to last season. Last year, of course, round of 16 against PSG. This year, round of 16 against Lazio. And here we are on the 1st of January. Things aren't going as well as we would have hoped in the Premier League. Again, top four is what we're after. We're currently sitting in sixth place on 30 points. So not the worst in the world, but definitely want to be doing a lot better. Burnley, West Ham and Leicester all in the relegation zone. It was hard to do business when we only had 5 million pounds, but that being said, I probably wouldn't have done any business regardless, regardless because I'm quite happy with our squad. Those injuries are only short term. Next season, if we don't win the Champions League this season, I'll look to make some changes. Jorginho and probably Mane will be upgraded for younger versions, but we're going to have a crack with the squad we have right now. Lazio, round of 16. Let's see how we go. Leg one away. That's the way I like it. Full strength starting 11. Christensen has gone up to a 90 overall as well. I realized that when I was about to start this game. Our bench is looking strong as well. You got Meyer on the bench, but Lazio, they've got Ignacio, Dembele, Milinkovic, Savic, Sisto. We're getting away goal though through Chiesa. That is what you want to see 20 minutes into it. We're getting away goal. Mane with the injury. I hope that's not bad. He's one of our key players. He comes off, but Chiesa, Chiesa, whatever, picks up a brace. That is beautiful stuff. 2-0 up here. A third away goal would be fantastic, but I'm pretty happy with 2-0 at the moment. Christensen, yellow card, but two away goals is great. All right, 2-0 heading into this one. Let's hope we can get through this second leg, holding on to the advantage, and most importantly, not picking up any injuries or suspensions. Most importantly, injuries. Uh, suspension might be on the cards for Bustos as he gets yellow carded in the second minute. Zelinski makes it 3-0. That is what we want to see. He picks up another goal nine minutes later. Zelinski makes it 4-0. We're going to be going through, barring a minor miracle from Lazio. But we look like we're going to be getting back to the quarterfinals. It's been a great two legs here. 2-0 in both legs. Still 10 minutes to go, so anything can happen. But I don't think Lazio is going to get four goals. Zelinski gets a hat-trick. What a game it has been from the Polish midfielder. And we go through 5-0 against Lazio. 
Well, just like last season, quarterfinal time means we come up against a world-class side, one of the best sides in world football, Manchester United, an all-English affair in the Champions League quarterfinals. Can we beat our best stage in the rebuild so far? Can we get through to the semifinals? We came close last year against Barcelona. We're much better than last year. I pray, I pray we get to the semi-finals. All right, here we go. Away leg first, that is what you want to see. We're traveling to Old Trafford, one of the best stadiums in world football, the best stadium I have visited. Of course, I did go there last weekend. So if you haven't seen the vlog of that, definitely go and check that out. But can we get a good start? Deli Alley getting us an away goal. United squad seems very similar to the one we have. they have in real life. Castillo and Roberto, the only players in the starting 11 that I don't recognize from real life right now, like that actually play for United. But we've got an away goal. Kempembe picks up an injury. Hopefully it is not bad. 10 minutes to go. Another away goal for us would be great. But Pereira in the 89th minute makes it one all. That is not what we want to see, but we still got an away goal at least. We have our backs against the wall heading into the second leg. No Kempembe. No Bustos. Bustos suspended, Kempembe injured. So Hote and Cedric, two original players coming in here. Our job is on the line. We have a low manager rating. If we don't win tonight, we are in big trouble. We just need to keep a clean sheet and we'll go through to the semifinals due to the away goal advantage. But that is definitely easier said than done. We're nearing halftime. Herrera on for Man United. Come on, Hornby on for United, whoever that is. Lukaku comes off. 20 minutes to go. Jorginho, a lot of cards, a lot of substitutions. If it stays like this, yes! Jorginho! No, Pereira! Oh, I was about to say we're going through, but now we're in extra time. Timo Werner! 103rd minute. Hold on. Hold on. Yes! We go through in extra time to the semi-finals. What a result. Well, well, well. The team that knocked us out in the quarterfinals last year is now the team that is maybe stopping us from getting to the Champions League final in Season 5. Can we get our revenge and take on either Real Madrid or Chelsea? Or will it be Barcelona eliminating us for a second year straight? This is going to be huge. Let's find out. Alright, the home leg first. That is not in our favour. Kimpembe still out for this first leg through injury. Bustos back in. Barcelona, let's see how their squad is looking now. The Stegen's going to be a beast. They've got Boateng, Carrasco's in there as well. Sanabria, they've bought well. Christensen picked up a yellow card. No away goals, please. No away goals at all. Christensen red carded. No. No, that is not what we needed. Christensen red carded. He's going to miss the second leg. Please, no. That is not good at all. And now... It is nil all after the first leg, but we are missing Christensen and Kempembe, our two centre-backs for the finals, or for the semi-final at least. So we have a makeshift back four for this second leg against Barcelona. Bustos into the left-back spot, Hernandez in the centre-back, Cedric into right-back. Would much rather having Kempembe and Christensen though, but we need to score a goal here. Nil all heading into the second leg. Deli Alli gets us an away goal, yes! Barcelona now need to score two goals. I mean, they can easily do it, but as the game ticks on, it gets more and more pressure time-wise. Deli Alli 2-0. I didn't know what the hell I was saying, but now Barcelona need three goals. We look like we're going through to the Champions League final. Deli Alli, step up, bow down. You have been an absolute weapon for us. Southampton through to the Champions League final. So... We have stopped an El Clasico Champions League final because we are going to be facing Real Madrid Season 5. Can we bring it to Southampton? Let's go, lads. They have beat, defeated Chelsea, Atletico Madrid, and Man City in their run to the final. So they've got, had, they have had a very difficult run, but so have we. Lazio, Man United, and Barcelona. Can we get it done and finish it off here against Real Madrid? Taking a look across the rest of the competitions, Real Sociedad did take down Borussia Dortmund 4-0. We miss out on Champions League football for season number six. Oh dear, that just put 10 times more pressure on my shoulders. We finish in sixth position. Chelsea, oh sorry, Spurs win the league comfortably. 
Leeds, Burnley, and Leicester all going down to the championship. We were eliminated in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup by the eventual champions, Manchester United. And we were eliminated in the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup against, again, eventual champions, Tottenham. But anyways, fellas, we're going to have a look at the squad report here, hopefully for the last time in today's rebuild. I mean, if we don't win it this season, season number five, we're going to have to wait till at least season number seven to get it done. So... I'm definitely going to be in extra, extra, extra try-hard mode for this game. Normally, I'm very, very concentrated, but today I'm going to be super duper comp concentrated trying to get the result here. We've built a very good side. Next season, if we don't win it this season, I'm going to make some big changes, get rid of some of the older players, and bring in some fresh blood to give us chances of competing in season number seven. But let's hopefully not get to that stage. Let's worry about now. Let's do it. Southampton versus Real Madrid, the Champions League final. When I can't find home, the stars won't glow. You're the light that guides my way on empty roads. When my fellas Southampton versus Real Madrid let's get it we're gonna elect for the slow build-up play though trying to get quality opportunities Deli Alley going here to Timo Werner playing it through Kies has got the pace back post Zelinski oh it's gonna be a goal kick oh wow Real Madrid here on the attack Servi trying to find an option goes through here to Grimaldo Grimaldo in there. It's going to be Erdegaard, that header, just looping straight into Perrin's gloves. Good stuff, Deli Alley. It's been Real Madrid with a lot of the possession here. We're trying to get a little bit of control in this one. It's a beautiful ball. I'm just going to go. Timo Werner wins the ball. What the hell? Look at the physicality. He's going to score it. Oh, my. What in the world was that goal? Timo Werner makes it 1-0 half an hour into this Champions League final. We won the ball up against Valley Ho. I was just absolutely button mashing B there. And then the shot, I thought Navas had got enough on it, but it's just rolled into the back of the net there. Look at that. I'm just holding down the sprint button, then just button mashing B. And then we take the shot. He gets a palm out to it, but it's off. And then Grimaldo, I thought he was going to clear it off the line. So many things going in our favor there. And we have the lead half an hour into this Champions League final. This goes on the attack. He's trying to get to it with Jorginho, but we don't want to go lunging in with him. That was dangerous. Still on here for Real Madrid. Isco, the skills. You are kidding me. Isco, Disco. What a goal we have conceded. Yep, I can't even be mad about that. The ball rolls and the long shot. That is going to be one all 40 minutes into it. I want to see a replay of this. We got absolutely destroyed there. I was lunging into challenges, but I thought overall we controlled it. That last lunge, but what a finish. You can't take anything away from that. Isco, someone I was looking at when I was going for Deli Alley, but that is one all. All right, Jorginho lining up the free kicky, 21 yards out. Come on, mate. We're going to hit this one. Jorginho, the Italian, off the crossbar. The follow-up blocked. That could have been the lead again. I want to see a replay of this. The follow-up, oh, I wanted to see the actual sh the actual free kick, but we hit the crossbar. Still on though, Zielinski. Off the corner. Looking to put this one into the area. Floats it in there. Lucas Hernandez saved from Kaylor Navas on the stroke of halftime. Kimpembe, not the one you want in that area. And it's going to be... I don't even know what it's going to be. Is it going to be a free kick for us? It is. Let's see if we can get it happening here. 
We're going to float it in again. Zelinski. Ah, oh, straight at the end. They're in the attack here. We've seen Isco with the long shot so far. We can't give him another opportunity. Martin Erdegaard going to Isco. He gets the follow-up. What a save from Perrin. We're going to make a substitution here. Jorginho is making me nervous. Maximilian Meyer comes on to start off the second half. Real Madrid with the corner, though. Isco's been an absolute threat for us. A threat and a half. He's going to go in here. Absolutely lobbed in. Christensen. Timo Werner wins the ball back. We need to get rid of it. Now we get rid of it. Now we might be able to hit him on the counter. Deli Alley. Beautiful ball there. We're on the counter attack here. Whoever that is. Make the run through the middle. What a ball. Timo Werner. One on one. Timo Werner. What a save from Kaylor Navas. Good stuff there. Kiesa winning the ball back. Passing it around. Maya. Going to Hernandez. Going to Timo Werner. We've been in control in this second half so far. Kiesa. The, we're going to get back post. I'm just trying to read the play. Timo Werner. What a bullet. Off the crossbar. We're in front again. I was concentrating so hard in the lead up play. I couldn't even pronounce what was happening. But what a ball that was from Chiesa. Great move to get in there. I wanted to go to Deli Alley at the back post. But that works out well. The shot into the palm of Kaylor Navas. And luckily it rockets off the crossbar. And into the back of the net. Southampton back in front. They're running straight up the line here. Grimaldo, back post. Why would you punch that away, Perrin? Catch that one. Now we've given them a shot. Thank God it was Grimaldo in that situation. Throw in here for Real Madrid. They go in here. Servi up against Bustos. Puts that one into the area. Thank God Hernandez was able to get that one away. I was quite scared about that. Now we're on the counter-attack. Mane up against James Rodriguez. Mane's got the legs at the moment. Of course, James Rodriguez probably lost a lot of pace due to his age in the game. Deli Alley, look at the opening. Timo Werner gets the hat trick. We're going to win the Champions League final. What a team goal that was. I was just casually talking about James Rodriguez's stats. And then I realized that we had a massive overlap opening up here. I was playing defensive and counter attacking football. Works out amazingly. Timo Werner taps it home, and we look like we are going to be Champions League winners. That is one of the most satisfying goals I have ever scored. We're into stoppage time now. We've all but got the title secured. Can Real Madrid get a goal back and make it look respectable on their behalf? I'm going to boot that one upfield, blow the full-time whistle referee. Can we get a fourth goal? That would be great. But I see the referee getting ready to stop. There it is! Southampton, Champions of Europe, baby. 3-1 result. Timo Werner hat-trick. What an incredible game that was to watch. Such an entertaining one that was definitely not in the balance at all. But, fellas, if you enjoyed today's rebuild with Southampton, make sure you leave a like on the video. Make sure you bloody score and kick that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. Check out my social media links and all that good stuff. But most importantly, ooh, testy pop. I hope you have a fantastic day. It has been Jared HD here. I am out. Peace. Keeps calling back to you Pulling me down